I'm happy this morning to be flanked by these incredibly professional and dedicated uh, people. I've just said uh, both to Ginny and to, to Beth that uh, it is a real privilege uh, to be associated with folks as committed as they are that bring years of, of tremendous professional judgment, expertise, and, a, and, and experience to bear. And uh, the results you're, you're going to see today in the, in the State of Hawaii Healthcare Innovation Plan. And I wanted to preface it, if I could, uh, with uh, some remarks uh, having to do with what I've been uh, doing for the last week uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. with the National Governors Association. I think it bears directly on the, what I consider the efficacy uh, of this plan and the transformational nature of it and uh, the fact that I think uh, it, it is more than just a projection of what might be, but a really solid plan for where we want to go and how to get there uh, in the future where health care is concerned, particularly in the light of some of the parochial uh, and, and uh, narrow uh, discussions that are taking place about the Affordable uh, uh, Care Act. Uh, this is way beyond that. Uh, this is the, the comprehensive plan for Hawaii to improve health care, health care delivery uh, in, in, in Hawaii. This uh, starts uh, uh, with uh, 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 funding for, for, the, uh, for the office uh, represented by, by Beth, uh, the health care transformation coordinator, for which, for which I'm very grateful to the legislature in recognizing that, that the day-to-day -day coordination and trans transdepartmental uh, orientation that we have to have in order to accomplish this uh, is necessary, and, and uh, I'm grateful to uh, the legislature for that. And of course, we have to do this on a cooperative basis. When, when uh, some folks have mentioned uh, conflicts of interest, uh, there's conflicts of interest if people are in opposition to one another. There are no conflicts of interest if the interests of the particular uh, entity, private entity, and the interests of the public coincide. That's the key. If someone's, if someone's uh, special interest and a private interest uh, are uh, at issue because of the failure to promote the public interest, then you have a, an equation that needs to be examined. But if, if, the, pri if the, the special interest and the public interest coincide, uh, then that's something we need to pursue. And we need to have people who can per, uh, pursue that. And that's what Jenny Pressler represents. Uh, of course, in, in her uh, 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 real life, um, she is uh, vice president of Hawaii Pacific Health uh, and, and is co-chairing with Beth this, uh, th this um, uh, responsibility for presenting this in incredibly progressive and comprehensive plan that I think transcends all interests uh, and, and meets the public interest. Now, uh, I have been pursuing it uh, uh, on a national level as well, because uh, even though we've had the, the prepaid health care plan going back to 1974 and 5 uh, in terms of its origin, uh, the, the provisions for, uh, for health care uh, delivery, uh, the, the protocols associated with health care delivery and so on have, have been um, transitioning themselves ever since that time. So... Uh, the importance of health care is a personal need for all of us. Uh, access, quality, reliability. Access, quality, reliability. It's more than just insurance. It's more than just insurance. Uh, in fact, insurance is only the step, uh, uh, yeah, a major step, a foundational step, but only a step with, in terms of providing access, in terms of providing quality, in terms of providing reliability. That's what we're aiming at. And, of course, uh, absent uh, this being able to be sustained, we, we, we can't sustain our government, uh, locally, uh, uh, state, uh, or federal, uh, because we have to bring costs under control. It's not spending. Uh, spending is chasing costs. That's the reality. It's not just spending for spending's sakes. It's what, what are the costs as the population ages, as more people are living longer, as, 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 as uh, treatment for, for disease becomes more exotic, if you will, with the advance of technology. These things have to be not only taken into account, but, but paid for. And uh, 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 of course, then, um, uh, we can do this. And uh, I think health care delivery, health insurance uh, that's supportable, health information technology, which is crucial 
for, for people to understand what it is they need to do and, and how to trans, translate and transmit that to the general public. A health care workforce to be able to, to, to provide for it. For example, right now, I, I just had a conversation in Washington with General Eric Shinseki. I bring it up because he, he, uh, you know, our, our own uh, Kauai's uh, Eric Shinseki, who's uh, uh, the head of the Department of Veterans Affairs. And we were talking about, with the president, uh, how can we integrate uh, veterans now that the, there are more and more veterans uh, coming into the civilian workforce. And they were talking about uh, um, uh, accreditation. Uh, uh, so that if someone is an x-ray technician or, or a nurse uh, in, in, in the Air Force or the Army, that they can assume that position in, in, uh, in, the, in the healthcare workforce, perhaps at, at Pacific Health uh, or, or any of our hospitals or, or, or clinics. How do you do Or uh, uh, emergency room where Josh, where Josh is, is working on the, on, the, uh, on the Big Island right now? And I, what I was able to point out to him, I said, it's not so much accreditation, it's articulation. What we need is the same kind of thing we need between, say, a community college and, and the four-year school, that if you're taking sociology at the community college, it's articulated, that is to say it's transferable uh, to the, the four-year school. If you're going to Maui Community College or you're going on the Big Island to the community college, can you then have it transferred to Hilo or, or to Manoa or wherever it is in the four years? Now, with the, the military then, we need that same kind of thing, articulation. Well, that's a new, that's, that, that, that was something they hadn't thought about before. I said, that's what it is. It's transferable. That's the kind of innovation that, that is part of this plan. That's what we're talking about. So we followed up then on, on, uh, on uh, the healthcare transformation is going to be primary care practice, redesign, care coordination, payment reform, health information technology, and workforce, workforce development. Now, that follows on what we have been pursuing now for over a year. I'll make this available to anybody. You can get it off the, the, the website. Uh, but if you want to just request it, this is uh, uh, from our, our National Governors uh, Association, The Untold Healthcare Story 2013. Governors lead the way in transforming U.S. healthcare system. And then that was in December, uh, last December. And then just within the last day, uh, we met and, uh, and agreed, this is the Governor's Association, on a, a letter here, I'll just read the first paragraph. Uh, the nation's governors today, February 24th, um, uh, at our winter meeting, delivered health care recommendations to the President and the Secretary of Health and Human Services that cover almost exactly word for word what's in our Hawaii uh, health plan and where we're going. The reason I bring that to your attention is that sometimes I think uh, it may be that that folks think, well, why do you? Well, uh, you can't work nationally. We all have to do it locally. Just because the Congress is paralyzed doesn't mean that we have to be paralyzed in state government. I want to point out that this is a unanimous recommendation of the national governors, the majority of whom are Republicans. The majority of whom are Republicans. Now, the task force we had, of course, is evenly divided between Republicans and, and, and Democrats in terms of the task force. But when you come to the recommendation of the Governors Association as a whole, that means you have to get a majority of Republicans to go along with it if you have a consensus or, in fact, a unanimous uh, recommendations. We've been able to do that. This is the kind of work that we were able to do in Congress before, uh, I'm happy to say, uh, nostalgically speaking, about the way it used to be. But what I'm driving at is we're not paralyzed. And, and we, have, we have people who understand what this is all about nationwide. And so I, I am very pleased to be able to say that when you examine, and we'll make, make this available to you too, the recommendations to the president, they almost exactly parallel what health care uh, innovation plan is all about, which leads me to ask uh, um, Beth to, to speak and then uh, um, uh, Jenny uh, to speak, uh, because I think that we can put our innovation plan, our health care transformation plan up against any in the country and find that, uh, that if anything, we're on the leading edge. And uh, uh, as, a, as a result of the fine work that uh, Jenny uh, and, and Beth and, and their team that they're going to uh, articulate for you right now uh, have accomplished o o over, over these past months. Thank Beth? you very much. Thank you, Governor. And I would like to start out um, 
this afternoon by acknowledging and thanking the many people in this room because this is the part of the very wide stakeholder group that we assembled to put together this plan. Uh, I am very pleased and proud of the fact that you have been working with us day in and day out to make this happen. And we certainly would not be here today talking about this comprehensive health, health transformation plan without you. So thank you to our stakeholders. I also note that a number of my staff are here in the room, um, both present and former, and they certainly make this, this process work too, since uh, there are only a few of us, and healthcare is a big job. So thank you all very much, and I applaud you for your hard work. <clears throat> so to, to give you a flavor of what we're trying to accomplish here, I want to start by talking about um, our goals here. And we're calling this the triple aim plus one. So the triple aim is talked about in healthcare circles a lot. It's about better care, better health, lower costs, and we want to add one specifically about reducing health disparities. I think that we are aware that in Hawaii we have generally better um, health status, we have lower costs, we're doing pretty well here, but we don't want to forget those very important populations who are not enjoying that good health. Um, that certainly includes a disproportionate number of Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. We're also concerned about the increasing number of people who have chronic diseases. And although the people in this room probably are very well aware of it, I think it also bears remembering that if you have a chronic disease, most likely uh, you see a handful of providers, uh, you take a variety of prescription drugs, you have a number of different uh, diagnostic procedures done, and our system typically doesn't help the patient and the patient's family coordinate care, reduce errors, reduce duplication, and this is really one of the, 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 the situations that is making our healthcare system more expensive and reducing the quality. And so those are the things that we're trying to uh, address with our healthcare transformation plan specifically. I know that everybody is very concerned about money too, and so we could have any number of, uh, of, of graphics about how our health care system is not sustainable in terms of cost, but we felt that this was a good one. Um, you can see that in the span of a very few short years, the health care costs increased considerably. On the other hand, we know that other things did not increase that much, and that goes especially for wages. So um, uh, there's a big contrast there, and we want to address that and acknowledge that. And one of the, the areas that we feel really is low-hanging fruit is the 10% of <coughs> the hospitalizations in ER use that could be avoided. Those are the really expensive parts of our healthcare system, and we, we believe that there are ways that we can address that through our plan to reduce those costs, and that adds up just by itself to more than $350 million a year. So just in brief, I want to talk about what the elements of our plan are. And as the governor noted already, we're talking about improving the way we deliver primary care to make it patient-centered and accessible to all patients. We know that care coordination is important, whether it is for any of us who are trying to negotiate our complicated health care system, or particularly for high utilizers and high need populations uh, who need a lot of attention to keep them healthy and out of emergency rooms and hospitals. Um, we also are looking at all insurers uh, to make sure that the, the insurance part of the equation is paying more for value and not so much for volume. Um, we are looking at health information technology, which is truly a foundation for how we can move things forward with, with improving the system 
higher quality, uh, reduction in errors and waste, uh, having better data to guide us as we continue to transform our plan. Workforce is very important. Uh, healthcare is a big part of our economy, and as our, our healthcare system changes, we also need to make sure that our workforce is changing and that we are dealing with our workforce shortages in healthcare uh, as we go along. And then one final thing that is very important as well the state is a payer for a significant part of our population, healthcare. A pair of health care costs for a significant part of our population. We also make regulations. We have many uh, programs that we're funding that have to do with health care. We are an important lever by working together and in alignment to move this health care transformation agenda along. So those are the main elements, and I want to turn this microphone over to Ginny Pressler now, who is my co-chair, and who is going to talk about how this is working out in the real world. Aloha. Aloha. I would first also like to thank all of those who are here uh, today. All of you are the ones who put this plan together, and I have a great deal of appreciation and thank you to all of you. This really is a collaborative plan. We had over 100 uh, individuals uh, uh, directly involved in the development of this uh, plan. You know, Hawaii is uh, frequently called the healthiest state in the nation, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that we do have very few uninsured in the state, and that is thanks to the Prepaid Health Care Act in 1974. And you know, we need to continue to try to get more people covered by insurance. However, insurance is only a part of the story. It's not lack of insurance that causes people to go to the emergency rooms. It's not lack of insurance that causes patients to be readmitted to the hospital when they could, don't necessarily need to be. It's not lack of insurance that gets patients in the hospital in the first place with conditions that could have been taken care of in the outpatient setting. So what we really need to do is address the issues that have been mentioned by the governor and by uh, Beth, and that has to do with changing the way we provide care. Because if I have insurance, but I can't find a primary care physician, they're not available, or if I have a physician, but that physician can't see me in a timely manner, I will end up in the emergency room. This happens every day. So we need to do all of the things that are mentioned in this plan that have to do with workforce development, not only with the medical school, but with the nursing school, the pharmacy school, with social workers, with uh, patient navigators, with nurse practitioners, with health educators. Uh, there is a whole spectrum of workforce development that we are working on that we need to do in the state so that we can provide access to patients. They're part of a team so that the physician is still providing uh, uh, making sure that there's quality care following best practices and evidence uh, nationally. There's a lot that we can do in that regard. Health information technology, specifically, it's that access issue. Uh, just last week, I needed to um, talk to a physician, and so I was wondering, well, gee, maybe I should make an appointment. I get on my health advantage that we offer through our hospitals at Straub and Kapiolani and Polymomi and Wilcox, and send an email through my health advantage to my physician, you know, should I make an appointment? I got a call and a few minutes later saying, come in right away, this is a medical emergency. So I was, they fit me in. My, my physician was at another clinic at the time, but I saw another physician. They have my electronic records. I avoided an emergency room uh, visit. I did not need to go to the emergency room, but I did need to be uh, evaluated uh, right away. It was an eye problem, so nothing serious, and I'm, and I'm okay. Um, but I, I think that I, I use that as an example so that you can appreciate the everyday real uh, conditions that uh, we need to address. And it does require all of the wonderful recommendations that are coming from this health transformation, uh, uh, the health care innovation plan, uh, in order to, for us to be successful to improve access, quality, and affordability of uh, health care in the state. So I am happy to answer any questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, every legislator here will acknowledge that we know all about eye problems. People are always saying to us, can't you see what's going on? <laughs> can't you see this? What's wrong with you? Uh, we get that uh, all the time, right, Susie? Josh? 
Well, maybe, maybe you, Susie, but not Josh, right? <laughs> Nobody ever, that doesn't happen uh, that way. Also, um, uh, uh, this, I want to say that uh, I believe this is the first time formally that Dr. Rosen uh, has been has been in public, uh, at least in in terms of uh, being available for uh, for uh, um, a general questioning and so on in this kind of, of uh, situation. And we're very very grateful for her putting herself forward uh, uh, based on her long years of public service and commitment as as well. I won't go into all of the veterans that are here today because they've been. Uh, uh, Gordon and Kenny and others that are here have been gluttons for punishment for a long time. So uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um.